You've heard of the Suez Canal, you've heard of Neom, but what Saudi Arabia and Egypt are planning next might be even bigger, a bridge connecting Asia to Africa straight across the Red Sea. If it works, it could change how people, goods, and entire economies move between continents. Let's take a closer look at what might become one of the most complicated and most important projects in the world. This is the Strait of Tehran. It separates Egypt's Sinai Peninsula from Saudi Arabia's Tabuk region, a narrow but heavily trafficked passage that leads into the Red Sea. And right across this strait is where the proposed Saudi-Egypt bridge would sit. At first glance, it's a straightforward idea. Build a fixed connection that allows people and goods to travel directly between the two countries. But the story behind this project is far more complex. The idea of a Saudi-Egypt land connection is not new. In fact, it's been floating around for decades. The earliest serious proposal dates back to the late 1980s. Back then, both countries recognized the potential of linking their economies more directly. But the regional politics of the time, combined with financial and engineering limitations, kept the project from moving forward. In the early 2000s, the concept resurfaced. Feasibility studies were conducted, new route options were discussed, and both governments expressed interest once again. But once more, concerns about environmental impact, maritime rights, and regional tensions put the project on hold. The most significant breakthrough came in April 2016. That year, King Salman of Saudi Arabia visited Egypt, and alongside Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi announced a formal agreement to finally pursue the project. As part of that same deal, Egypt agreed to transfer sovereignty of the Tehran and Sanifer Islands to Saudi Arabia, a move that cleared one of the biggest legal and geopolitical obstacles standing in the way of the bridge. At that moment, it became more than just a hypothetical project. The government signed formal agreements, feasibility studies were updated, engineers from both sides began new site assessments. Since then, progress has moved slowly but steadily behind the scenes. As of mid-2025, Saudi officials have confirmed that much of the technical planning is complete. They've even left open the possibility that the final design may include not just a bridge, but a tunnel as well. After nearly four decades of on and off discussions, the Saudi-Egypt bridge has never been closer to becoming a reality. So, what exactly would this bridge look like? The full length of the crossing is estimated at around 32 kilometers, or roughly 20 miles. That might not sound especially long compared to some of the world's record-breaking bridges, but here, it's where they're building that makes it so challenging. The Strait of Tehran is not just a simple water crossing. It's a narrow but deep channel, with parts dropping to around 290 meters. That's almost as deep as the Eiffel Tower is tall. At its narrowest point, the strait is about 13 kilometers wide, but the chosen route stretches beyond that, likely to avoid key shipping lanes and environmentally sensitive coral reefs. The current design proposals suggest a combination of causeways, suspension bridges, and possibly even submerged tunnels in certain segments. The inclusion of tunnels would help minimize environmental disruption, particularly to the highly sensitive coral reef systems that line the strait. And this is not just about cars driving across. The structure is expected to be multi Modal, designed to carry both road and rail traffic. That would allow both passenger vehicles and freight trains to cross between Saudi Arabia and Egypt, directly connecting to the broader Saudi Land Bridge rail network on one side and Egypt's national rail system on the other. The cost is estimated around $4 billion, and while that's a large number, but for a project of this scale and the strategic value it represents, it's considered relatively modest. If construction begins soon, the entire project could take roughly eight years to complete. This project is not just about convenience. It fits directly into Saudi Arabia's larger strategic goals, especially its Vision 2030 program. The Red Sea region is already home to some of the most attractive yet underdeveloped coastlines in the world. Projects like Neom, the Line, and the Red Sea project are already being built on the Saudi side. On the Egyptian side, it connects with the Sinai Peninsula, a region that has huge untapped potential for development, tourism, and new industries. Right now, getting from Saudi Saudi Arabia to Egypt requires air travel or long indirect routes. But with the bridge, tourists could drive directly from the Arabian Peninsula to Egypt's beaches and vice versa. Officials estimate that annual tourist traffic between the two countries could grow from around 300,000 to over 1.2 million visitors once the bridge is operational.
But the ambitions go far beyond tourism. The bridge would create a direct trade corridor connecting Africa and Asia. It would provide an alternative route for freight that currently moves through longer shipping paths or congested ports. Trucks and trains could carry goods directly between the continents, cutting time and costs. And then there's the symbolism. The project physically links two continents, sitting at one of the world's most historically and religiously significant sites. Some have already dubbed it the Bridge of Moses, referencing the biblical story said to have taken place nearby. When you look at the economics behind this bridge, the potential payoff becomes much clearer. Saudi Arabia is expected to provide most of the initial funding. In return, both countries anticipate several income streams once the bridge opens. First, toll revenue. The governments expect that tolls from private vehicles, freight trucks, and trains will generate significant annual income. Based on early projections, some analysts suggest the initial investment could be recovered within a decade through tolls and fees alone. Second, freight logistics. The bridge opens up an entirely new trade corridor between Asia and Africa. Third, job creation. The construction phase would employ thousands of workers on both sides of the Red Sea. And once operational, the bridge would require permanent staff for maintenance, customs processing, toll operations, and security. But perhaps most important is what happens around the bridge. New infrastructure often leads to new towns, industrial zones, and commercial hubs. Both Saudi Arabia's Tabuk region and Egypt's Sinai Peninsula have struggled to attract large-scale private investment. This bridge, and the international attention that comes with it, could finally bring long-term development to these historically underdeveloped areas. For Saudi Arabia, it's another step toward transforming its western coast into a global logistics and tourism powerhouse. For Egypt, it offers a rare opportunity to draw both investment and people into the underpopulated Sinai Peninsula. Of course, economic projections always sound optimistic on paper, but the raw potential here is hard to ignore. While the economic and strategic benefits are significant, this project also faces serious environmental and regulatory hurdles and they're not minor. The Strait of Tehran is one of the most ecologically sensitive bodies of water on the planet. Beneath the surface lies a complex ecosystem of coral reefs, seagrass beds, and endangered species, including dugongs, green sea turtles, and countless varieties of fish. These reefs are not just beautiful, they're critical to the health of the Red Sea and serve as major attractions for the region's diving tourism industry. Any large-scale construction here runs the risk of damaging these fragile habitats. In response, both governments have promised that any construction will follow strict environmental safeguards. But there's more than just environmental impact to consider. The Strait of Tehran is a critical maritime passage under international law. As part of the 1979 Camp David Accords, Egypt agreed to guarantee free navigation through these waters for all ships, including Israeli vessels. Any bridge design must leave enough clearance for large container ships, oil tankers, and military vessels to pass underneath safely without restricting access or violating these long-standing agreements. When Egypt transferred control of Tehran and Sanafir Islands to Saudi Arabia in 2016, Israel quietly approved the deal after receiving reassurances that its navigation rights would remain Remain protected. That approval effectively cleared one of the biggest political roadblocks standing in the bridge's way. But Israel is not the only concern. The Red Sea has become an increasingly contested waterway. The southern end has seen rising tensions involving Yemen's conflict, piracy risks near the Bab el Mandeb Strait, and broader competition for control over shipping routes. Building a major fixed crossing here means both countries will need to coordinate closely on security, not just during construction, but for decades after. Word. Seismic activity adds another layer of complexity. The Red Sea sits in a seismically active zone, and any structure built here must withstand the risk of earthquakes and shifting fault lines. That means deeper foundations, stronger pylons, and highly advanced monitoring systems to ensure long-term safety. Even with political agreements in place and technical plans advancing, this project still faces several major risks that could slow it down or even derail it entirely. First, the timeline. Officials have talked about an eight-year construction period once work begins. But these kinds of mega-projects almost never stick to their original schedules. Delays could come from environmental reviews, supply chain disruptions, labor shortages, 
or even changes in leadership priorities. Second, cost overruns. The $4 billion estimate is based on current designs and market conditions. But if material prices rise, engineering complexities increase, or unforeseen geological issues appear, those costs could easily climb much higher. And once you're building in deep water, small problems tend to get very expensive very quickly. Third, legal and environmental opposition. International environmental groups are already watching this project closely. Any misstep could lead to lawsuits, global pressure, or demands for additional studies that could freeze work for years. And finally, political stability. While relations between Saudi Arabia and Egypt are currently strong, long-term projects like this one require steady cooperation over many years. A change in leadership, economic crisis, or shift in public opinion on either side could suddenly place the entire project at risk. Big projects always carry big risks, and this one is no exception. The idea of linking continents over water is not limited to this part of the world either. At one point, there were discussions about a so-called Bridge of the Horns, a 28-kilometer proposal that would have connected Djibouti to Yemen, effectively linking Africa and the Arabian Peninsula at the Babel Mandeb Strait. That project, however, remains shelved due to political instability and regional conflicts. Closer to home, Egypt has also pursued alternatives to improve its cross-continental connections, expanding the Suez Canal, adding new tunnels under the canal itself, and building pontoon bridges to facilitate local travel between Sinai and mainland Egypt. But none of these alternatives directly replace what the Saudi-Egypt bridge is aiming to accomplish. That's what makes this project so different from everything else on the table. Technically, the project is ready to go. The political deals are signed, the plans are drawn, the funding is available. If construction starts soon, and that's still a big if, the bridge could be operational by 2033. But like every mega project, vision is one thing, execution is another. So now the question is, will this project finally break ground or will it end up as just another impressive concept that never sees completion. So what do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you soon in the next video.